back, everybody. Welcome back to Words with Wayman. I am your host, as always, Matt Wayman. Very glad to be back, everybody. We got a hot new episode this week. As always, check us out online on Twitter at Words with Wayman, Facebook, Words with Wayman. Uh, thanks for coming back and listening, everybody. Our guest today. Hot off the presses. Hot off the presses. Very special Denver boy, most bookable comic in Denver. Hot tamale writer, activist, sweet pea, landowner, Byron Graham. Everybody. Hello, thank Hello, you listeners. so much. Thank you for having me on the podcast, Matthew. No, you know what? The pleasure is all mine. I couldn't be happier that you could come out and do this because you do it all. You do a lot of stuff. You. I do. I. I mean, mostly just open mics. Yeah. That's the the hardest know. of all. The hardest of all, the like ritualistic, you know, ego deflating, soul sucking, yeah, ball kicking, in like a fun way, in a fun way. <laughs> I mean, it's after a while you got to get existential with it. There's glimmers of it, yeah. And if if you really aren't, I feel like that a way. Like a lot of people that when they do take it too seriously, especially with anything, they do just start like very getting harsh on themselves. Oh yeah. Well, early on, it's hard not to do that. Oh yeah, when you're just blowing it all, all on you're the reg. Doing is open mics. Oh yeah. And it's hard not to take it personally each time you bomb. I definitely did. <laughs> yeah. I still don't like it. I guess we got kind of lucky right now. Oh no, I still definitely don't like it. I think I chase laughs a little bit more than I should, as opposed to working <laughs> yeah. on new stuff, but. Uh, I think starting out, we got to do like a lot of time, so it's just like you're going to be up there for a while anyway, so it's like you just have to learn how to get comfortable quick. So is that a, like a Missouri thing where you got no. a lot of stage time? Or? That was New Orleans. It's because okay. like, there was Yeah, the, there's no club. There's no club, so it's just like a bunch of shows where there's six comics, and they're like, okay, you guys got an hour and a half to fill. Yeah, it's I've like, noticed <laughs> that. The, the, they're, they're like more verbose. They're mm -hmm. woolier. Like oh, their yeah. Their jokes take longer to tell. Oh, they definitely. And... I think because I started doing comedy works right away, I have that mm -hmm. rhythm of like, I'm going to get the mic cut off in six minutes, so oh, I need yeah. to hurry. I think that's true, especially after moving up here. It's like, uh, yeah, it is a lot more joke oriented. Mm -hmm. So it's like, get more laughs in there, just get out. It's basically what it, it helps. Is. I think if they don't like you, that like really windy style is going to mm -hmm. make them hate you even more. Oh, yeah, or just really just bored to you. Which yeah. is, I think is worse than just if they let you know that they didn't like you right out the gate. Just the silent, like where they're listening intently, but yeah. not enjoying themselves. How did you That's get into, did you get into comedy through writing? Was it a <laughs> progression that happened? Because I know you... I did. Yeah, I was, I always wrote. Mm -hmm. um, at the time I was writing for my college newspaper mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to write for Westward or the AV Club Denver was the one I really wanted to write for. Yeah. And I got an internship there, and then they shut down a week later. <laughs> They're like, listen, we got this kid on. We probably need to shut this thing down. The, uh, I know. Just, it was a corporate thing. The Onion yeah. closed all of their local presses. Mm -hmm. So the guy who interviewed me for the internship there is Corey Cachado, who also works at Westward. Oh, okay. But I, you know, I used to read Westward a lot, too. I read Adam's old columns. Yeah, really, really good. Yeah, Denver Free. And that was like the first Meg. time I'd heard of, you know, any sort of scene here. It's not like now where if you want to find a show, it's a short Google search away. Like, you had to kind of dig back then. Mm -hmm. Like, that was the archives. I didn't know if any of that shit was still going on. Yeah, you'd go to one show and then that, uh, like somebody would be like, hey, check out this other show that's on Wednesdays or something. And you just kind of, like, had to learn through that. Yeah. for Like, there was, there was something about the Squire closing, but there was nothing about it reopening, yeah. for example. <laughs> <laughs> like, I... Uh, I emailed Brad Galley because he used to host the Curtis Street mic. And he's like, that's been over for years. Man. <laughs> and then he sent me like a prototype basically of the 5280. Nice. Yeah, it was, I was like a starred email for yeah, a long yeah. time. And when I finally met Brad Galley, I was like, oh, that, that's oh, okay. That's funny. Because I feel like every scene had like a master list somewhere. Yeah, like it, it took us a little while to get on board To get with it together, that. which is what every, every scene needs. But most of them have it now. Yeah, I think so. And uh, the... I mean, Josiah kind of started the 10 best shows, but mm -hmm. I feel like I'm just, I'm no more about what's going on, like, from people, you know, people he wouldn't talk to. Oh, yeah, because you'd write that pretty much every month, right? Mm -hmm. the, yeah, the there's, I, since I started doing it, other than, or since Josiah stopped doing mm -hmm. it, I guess, yeah. I, I've been doing it. And you can check it out. I mean, he set the template up, you know, he created that beat there at Westward, so I'm yeah. grateful for that. Oh, absolutely. Um, but I, you know privately feel like i do it better because i'm 
uh, you know, I know everybody. On the pulse, man, we're doing the show now where we book out bands and stuff too. And it's like, man, I just like don't know yeah. as much because I go out and see comedy all the time. So it's like a lot of times I'm taking people's words for it or yeah, just, I don't like, know any finding of the a musician that sees them all the time that can be like, hey, just like when you're when you're in the scene more and you see it more. Yeah, it's for easier. the Atlas thing, you're booking bands. Yeah, we're doing like a band at uh, at the Crossroads Theater. We're doing. Oh, uh, the Atlas is different. Yeah, the Atlas is a good theater too. That's over uh, Improv Theater, Grafenberg okay. Productions, over right by the Squire, actually. Okay, Which, I think yeah. I know where that is. I yeah. haven't. I get it confused because I just I wrote about the Camp Atlas thing. Oh, okay. But no, yeah, the Crossroads Theater is where mm-hmm. you go. Crossroads are. Theater monthly show, really. Fun. Are they both in churches? Yeah, uh-huh. That's where comedy's going these days. You didn't yeah, know? Yeah, man, you get church real estate. Dude, they gotta... God's coming back to comedy, okay? <laughs> Mainly because he can keep theater costs down. <laughs> He's a sweet hey, tax-free. Tax-free, come on. We're doing the Lord's work. We appreciate it. Free beer in church. So so basically you write for the Westward and then yeah. just pretty much do comedy almost full-time. I mean... Yeah. Um, yeah. I pay my bills because I own my house mm-hmm. and I have a roommate who pays like a you know well below market rate oh yeah rent. and uh but that's enough to like pay my bills every month nice have a little bit left and then i just sort of subsist off of westward and stand that's kind of like the dream really i mean just to be able to subsist it's nice yeah i mean it it would really help to have a weekly open mic where mm-hmm. i was paid a hundred dollars that's true do you really find help. that since you've made the transition that way that you that it is translated to writing more and putting more into the actual thing that you want to or i think i mean it's it depends i write like two or three maybe like on a really busy week i write three or four things um whereas i'll do stand up pretty much every single night yeah um i've i think i wasn't like necessarily more writing more beforehand but i definitely put more effort into stand up right now for sure yeah, because it's a choice. I mean, a lot of times when if you're going 100 percent at something, I mean, it's gonna show a little bit. Yeah, like I don't, I don't really give a shit about Russell Peters. You know what I mean? But I cranked out 250 words on yeah. it because that's the job. <laughs> so it is that thing. Of, yeah, I mean, that is what you're trying to do. So that is what you do. It is, and it's dumb because it's what I've always wanted to do. Yeah. But it's also like not that much money and only interesting like. Every three or four articles. Yeah, you could really interview some cool shit. comedians yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, that Brian Regan thing was the coolest. Yeah. That was uh, a really fun interview. And I had it, I had the audio for months before I released it. Nice. So it was nice to finally like get the feedback that uh, when people read it and they liked it. And he didn't cancel his fucking show, which happens yeah, all the time. That's nice. One of my favorite interviews was with Nick Foley. Mm-hmm. And he was going to come to Comedy Works, but then he got injured. And canceled the show, so the interview's just not, like for nothing. He hasn't been back since. <gasps> you can't even re- yeah, replay it. That's funny. And now it's been like years, so all of the information would be out of date. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's just it was a great conversation for nobody. Yeah, that's what a lot of times I feel like podcasts are in some <laughs> senses too, right? <laughs> but you can archive it. I yeah, mean, you can. No, definitely. This is gonna go out there. This I is mean. gonna go out there. This will <laughs> exist. Oh boy, Bubba, uh, you Bubba chill out. A, we got a door guy. Something to say. Door intermission. We're gonna keep it rolling. That is, that okay. Is, that is a brief hiatus. We always, I just to keep, buzz in you know, to buzz in somebody in. in. I got, we go 110 here. We don't re-record. Is that we the noun form it. of agent, like the agencyer? Is that a thing? Sure, that sounds nice. That probably looks better on. It <laughs> sounds more like financier, which was what yeah. we're all looking for, really. In the I end. was figuring because of the the C sound. Yeah. Agencyer would be. Agency, or I mean, if if we could ever find a way guys, to get those I mean, cards reprinted, you guys reprinted. can make it a thing. They they add words to the Oxford Dictionary they, all the time. <laughs> Whenever we get that type of money, that's where we're, we're hanging around for. You get that Oxford Dictionary money. When I get that dictionary money, which that is I'm getting out. We're going to be out of comedy by that point. <laughs> we're just trying to make enough money to get into the dictionary game, and then get oh, into man. that. That's that's one of my most grandiose ambitions is to. Create a word that gets into the OED. Yeah, mine's yeah. just to have a park bench named after me. You can just, you can just. I know that's money. what I'm saying. That's uh, attainable. That's highly attainable. I mean, <laughs> that's good to have attainable goals, right? And you know, usually it's a charitable donation. Mm-hmm. 
People sit like, on it. Though. I know that's yeah. what I'm saying. So we'll get, we'll see. So you're gonna do it prehumously? <laughs> I just so always sit on my bench and be like, you can't. This is kind of my place. So like, I'm haunting it. <laughs> I'm haunting it already. I'm getting ready. Haunted bench. <laughs> Do you ever find that you write for fun though too still now, or is that you think that's kind of faded into stand up more? That's faded. Yeah, usually the like the creative energy goes towards stand up. Mm-hmm. I used to write more fiction and stuff, mm-hmm. and I haven't in a long time. Yeah. Even though I really like, I think that I'm probably better at that than journalistic Absolutely. writing. There's I, there is crossovers too, like stuff like erotic fan fiction and some of those more writer oriented shows. I really shows. want to do erotic fiction. Yeah. Like, I feel like I would do so well in that. Of show. course. Um, kind of just a way to cross to meet in the middle a little bit. Yeah, but also like Brian Cook guy. Very intimidating. Yeah, he's a sweetheart. Real grump. Real nice guy. <laughs> just calling people out on the phone. <laughs> he's real sweepy. No, he's done, he's done a couple of our shows when he's in town. Met him down in New Orleans. But it's a fun show. And like those are kind of the ways that, especially I feel like a lot of writers are going these days of kind of creating these new forms of shows that are suited a little bit more towards their needs or just make it a little bit more fun, you know? Yeah. I like I like the it, as long as it's not too gimmicky anything mm-hmm. to liven up the showcase format. Yeah, and not just be just like yeah, people telling bad stories about their poor childhood, which is just what on the mic is. That's what narrator. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, now we're really throwing shade. No, I li- I've never seen the narrators. I like narrators, but there, it is a lot of sad stories about childhoods. Oh really? Isn't that, that's just all stand-up is anyway. That's what <laughs> the essence of an open mic is. What happened to you when you were little that you want to talk about right now? Yeah, is but it? you got to decode it. There's Put a couple of punch lines in it. a lot of uh, butts and porn. You know, a lot, of, yeah. a lot of porn and a lot of taking shits. Those are like the f- two formative experiences for fledgling comics, I think. I'm still trying to work through that. I'm still doing a lot of fart stuff. Yeah, a lot of anal stage. <laughs> yeah. Freudian anal stage with your stand Maybe like another six years and maybe I'll be able to get over that hump a little bit. <laughs> You'll get to your penis envy. <laughs> Finally. Did you go to, so you went to school for journalism then I guess? Went to college? Um, sort of, I, no, I never journalism directly. I went to all the, all the CUs, every university of Colorado, yeah. except the n- nursing. They wouldn't let there. you in. They wouldn't. Um, I went to CU Boulder, CU Colorado Springs, and CU Denver. Did not graduate. Um, and I went for film, education, and then just literature. And didn't get any degree. In Sometimes, you know what I mean? Um, Had a lot of fun. I did the longest. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about I, I, I felt like I needed to have more achievable <laughs> dreams. Than then shaping the youth? The right teacher. Oh, yeah. And, uh, no. It, it was awful. As soon as I was shadowing teachers, I was like, Jesus Christ. It's like you're fighting against bureaucracy all the time. You're like wondering if what you're doing makes any difference. And you got to fucking get up early. Like, yeah, that's the, that's the biggest issue for me. That was the only thing that drove me into the comedy. It was basically the, what time you had to wake up. You got to focus. How many hours are hard to beat? They're fantastic. That's what keep me going in the game, you know. That's, because that's the eye of the prize. Waking up at 11, yes, please. Yeah. I guess like... F- I've read about habits of a lot of novelists, and, st- and they all get up early, which is a weird thing. Like, they, like, you need to be awake during the hours no one else is awake, but they, like, get jump the gun on it instead I'm, of staying awake and, like, letting letting it happen. I'm down for definitely writing early. I think your brain's definitely different in the morning, but I'm also, no, that I don't write really that good of stuff drunk. Yeah. I've never been like, oh, that was fantastic. It was like, no, it was like, this was a bunch of words. You that, don't. that like romantic Hemingway image, of just bleary-eyed, huddled over a typewriter, like a shawl over your shoulders mm-hmm. and like a snifter of something strong. You just crank out genius words and they're like, don't even remember writing. Then you it. look at it the next day and you're like, I, I need to yeah. stop writing. <laughs> <laughs> when it does nothing after that. I used to, when I was in high school, I used to like try to write something when I would take a new drug. I'd like yeah. try to take, like there's something to be said for that. Try Absolutely. To write something and see how it worked. Yeah. And it was all, it was always just the same bullshit that I was, that I would have written anyway. Oh, of course like, it was never, I don't remember drawing any conclusive evidence from it, No. but it was a way to like make taking drugs. It's a way to learn how to think differently. Cause you can read that stuff uh, when you're sober and be like, that was thinking this different way. You know, it's a way to just kind of keep track. I think it's a, I think that's a great thing to do. I still have it, but Jesus Christ, I don't want to read it now. 
It's probably the most embarrassing shit that I wrote as a drugged out 16 year old. I got a book I wrote when I was in like, the fourth grade and I was just like about <laughs> to cry reading this thing. Oh man. Like, what? Fourth grade? That's like, that's long enough ago that it's cute though. Yeah. It's like, up it's The teen years, that's the prime embarrassment. It was, it was hack is what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Is Little kids are such hacks. Little kids, I, I know that as me being a child. I was. A, <laughs> people don't want to talk about it. Never call them out. Little kids, joke oh, thieves. Yeah, hacks. joke thieves. Just, if you want to take one thing away from this episode, take it. The little kids are joke thieves. That has been uh, part one with Byron Graham on Words with Wayman. Byron. Words with Wayman. Words with Wayman. Before we get out of here, give your contact information, Twitter, give all that jazz for uh, On Twitter, it's at Byron FG. Yeah. And, uh, author page uh westward byron graham sure. uh that's not the address but you can google no, yeah westward page out. check it out yeah, on there. Just google, uh, you can see everything i've written everything he's a fantastic writer and a sweet boy we'll be right back with part two and thank you all so much for listening